Show. Talks fast, moves fast, shoots fast. If you want intrigue and danger, watch Wise Guy. It's a big, stylish vehicle with a full-size V8 engine. Ken Wall in the show everyone's raving about. Wise Guy, Wednesdays. This is CBS. Just ahead on 11 News, Houston police are searching for a gunman tonight who shot and killed a robbery victim because he had no money. A follow-up report on the boy who was shot in the mouth with a BB gun by his stepfather. The agony is not over for his family. They're racing all the way to the bank at one track in Houston. We'll tell you why. These stories, Dan's forecast and Matt Musil has sports. All coming up next on 11 News tonight. Join us. Channel 11 proudly presents the Houston Symphony Exxon Pop Series. Okay, let's try it. Newton Whalen leads the Houston Symphony and vocal soloist in Anything Goes, a salute to Cole Porter, Friday and Saturday, October 7th and 8th in Jones Hall. Another spirited performance in the Houston Symphony Exxon Pop Series, presented by Channel 11. For tickets, call 227-ARTS. This week on Cisco, a neighbor, James Kahn, is a cop with a partner from another planet in Alien Nation. Uh, George, I, I think you're crushing his little chest bones. Stay out of this, Matthew. Right. And the public and private life of John Lennon in a new documentary called Imagine. I hope someday you join us. That's this week on Cisco and Ebert. See Cisco and Ebert and the movies tonight at 1045 on 11. From KHOU TV in Houston, this is the Channel 11 News Weekend Report. Good evening, everyone. I'm Charles Hadlock. I'm Marlene McClinton. Topping the news tonight, a senseless and shocking crime in one northeast Houston neighborhood, where family and friends are grieving tonight after a worker was shot to death at the local fast food restaurant. A car believed to be the suspects and the vehicle that was involved in another robbery earlier Saturday evening is the only clue police have in the case. 34-year-old Alfredo Casas was killed during an attempted robbery of Hart's Chicken in Northeast Houston late Saturday night. Police say just before closing, Casas unlocked the restaurant door for a customer who turned out to be a robber. When Casas told the man he didn't have money, the robber shot Casas once in the neck at point-blank range. Co-workers say the bullet took the life of a good man. Real hard-working, real devoted type person, you know. Call him any spare time if somebody didn't show, he'd be here. You know, type, you know, he took a great interest in his job. There were a few customers in the, in the restaurant at the time of the shooting. If you have any information on the murder, contact the police. Nightfall literally means darkness for a Houston woman who can't afford to pay her light and gas bills. She is the same woman who recently went through turmoil after learning her common-law husband shot her, her son in the tongue eight times with a BB gun. Arthel Neville explains. Sunlight can't seep into Mamie Harper's windowless bathroom. The darkness highlights her situation. Her lights and gas were cut off, and she can't afford the bills. What do you need to get yourself back on your feet? $300. Harper worked with the Texas handicap workers for the past three years, but she was forced to quit her job in June. That's when she found out that her common-law husband, William Williams, had shot her son in the mouth with a BB gun. He was convicted in order to stay away from Harper and her son. Consequently, Harper spent time in shelters, time in attorney's offices, time in court, time away from work. And like everything was just like in a turmoil. My life just went upside down. And you can't hardly work on a job when, you, <laughs> when you're going through something like that. I mean, that's a lot of pressure. Harper says this weekend, Texas handicap workers offered her her old job back. She worked as a phone solicitor, a job that on a good week pays $150. But Harper says she's not emotionally ready to return to work yet. She and her son attend therapy sessions three times a week. Less than a month ago, she suddenly became the head of the household and her son fatherless. And so the end of one crisis has produced a different set of troubles for Mamie Harper. Arthel Neville, 11 News. Galveston police still have very few cl uh, clues in the disappearance of a Texas A&M co-ed. 22-year-old Suzanne Richardson has been missing since Friday a week ago. She was last seen by a security guard at the Casa del Mar Condominium Hotel. That's where Suzanne worked as a clerk at the front desk. 
Police still aren't sure if a brown leather shoe found near the desk belongs to the woman. Suzanne is about 5 feet 8 inches tall, 140 pounds with brownish blonde hair. If you have any information on her, contact the police. Some uninvited guests turned a college fraternity party into a frightening scene in New York today. Police say seven men entered the State University of New York at Stony Brook and raided a fraternity fundraising party, firing automatic weapons. One person was injured. The seven men, ranging in ages from 15 to 19, were dressed in camouflage fatigues and made off with stereo equipment. Police arrested seven suspects on campus several hours after the incident. They were charged with second-degree burglary. The wounded man was taken to the campus hospital and is listed in stable condition. Almost the entire town of Nitro, West Virginia, was evacuated today while a demolition team from Fort Worth blew up a corroded tank of hydrogen cyanide. Just a breath of cyanide can kill, so the EPA ordered an evacuation around an abandoned plant where the cyanide was made 20 years ago. The only safe way to get rid of the stuff is to blow it up and let it burn. After the blast, authorities took air samples and declared the town of Nitro safe. Texas residents hit hard by Hurricane Gilbert will finally be getting some much-needed financial help. Disaster relief centers will be open tomorrow in Bear, Cameron, and Hidalgo counties. Those were the three areas hardest hit by Gilbert. President Reagan declared the three counties major disaster areas at the urging of Governor Bill Clements. Individuals and businesses that qualify for aid are eligible for loans from the Small Business Administration, temporary housing, and grants for expenses. Well, there's still more ahead as 11 News continues tonight. We'll tell you how national drag races are helping put Houston on the fast track to economic recovery. The Museum of Texas History offers a lesson in ancient history based on Houston. And are those thunderstorms hammering down on parts of Houston tonight going to hang on through tomorrow? We'll have Dan's work week forecast much more when we come back. Stay with us. Channel 11 News is brought to you in part by Texas Commerce Banks. It's here, Field Day. Marshall Field's biggest sale of the season. Have a Field Day with up to 50% savings on fields of merchandise. For you, your home, and your family. Field Days. Don't miss spectacular buys throughout the store during Field Days. Marshall Field's biggest sale of the season. You'll have a Field Day through October 16th. Proudly presents the Houston Symphony Exxon Pop Series. Okay, let's try it. Newton Whalen leads the Houston Symphony and vocal soloist in Anything Goes. A salute to Cole Porter Friday and Saturday, October 7th and 8th in Jones Hall. Another spirited performance in the Houston Symphony Exxon Pop Series. Presented by Channel 11. For tickets, call 227-ARTS. Hey, hey, move, move, move. High school football. The season's here. And if your team wants to be Channel 11's high school team of the week, you got to have... Yeah! Now this team right. And a winning attitude. So find out if your team is Channel 11's high school team of the week. Right, guys? Yeah. Thursday at 5 and 10 on Channel 11 News. Sponsored by McDonald's. Fasten your seatbelt, a new sport is pumping millions of dollars into Houston's economy. Thousands of fans flock to a new drag racing track in Baytown for a national competition today. And as Janet Chamlin reports, many Houston businesses are reaping the benefits. Race fans clogged roads leading to the track and extra sheriff's deputies were called in to direct traffic. About 35,000 people came to Houston Raceway Park paying $25 a piece to see this. This is a national race sponsored by the Hot Rod Association. It's the first time Houston has been included in the 16-city competition, but organizers say it won't be the last. Although the track just opened in August, experts say it's already the fastest of its kind. Officials estimate $2 million will be pumped into the economy each day the races are here. That's not only at the track, but among the area's hotels and restaurants as well. This convenience store is one business benefiting from the track. 
Since the raceway opened, store owners have made sure they have extra supplies on hand. They've added several employees, even opened a barbecue business on the side. Look at all the people around coming in here to spend money. They wouldn't be here if the track wasn't here. Therefore, it's doing better. You know, it's doing good for them. Other than this, there's a few plants out here, but uh, as everybody knows, the oil industry has been going down the last few years, so the plants have been closing up, laying people off. But uh, this is going to be a really good thing for this area, I'm sure of it. Absolutely sure of it. After this competition, the next national race here will come in March. The owner says he doesn't have enough space now, so by next spring, he'll have added 10,000 seats and more parking space. News sure to please business people in Baytown. Janet Shamley in 11 News. A new archaeological find is causing many to change their view of Houston as a modern city, one that's not exactly steeped in history. An exhibit at the Museum of Texas History reveals life on the Houston bios thrived long before the Allen brothers ever laid eyes on this place. Nancy Holland has more. Bits of clamshell and bone tell the story of people who lived on the shores of Buffalo Bayou thousands of years ago. To the trained eye, their artifacts reveal their way of life, a life that was close to nature and in harmony with it. The people behind this exhibit say that is one of the lessons to be learned by those who come to see these pieces of the past. This is, this is a very significant point of their ability to live in the hunter-gatherer way for thousands and thousands of years and yet still leave their environment intact. Here too are glimpses of their daily life, carved gaming pieces looking much like dominoes and beads that were worn both for ceremony and daily life. They made beads out of the center portion of the lightning whelk, and these were a great trade item. They were made with these very, very small drills, and uh, they were traded as far north as Ar Arkansas and Oklahoma. And in their life, there was music played on a flute made from the leg of a whooping crane. The music that plays in the background of this exhibit is played by a NASA scientist who is also a Native American. J.C. Heigl says the haunting sounds he recreates were often part of courtship. But he would catch his eye on someone he liked, and he would compose a song for her. And that night he would go out in the buffalo grass when things were quiet, lean up against the back of a tree and play a song. The exhibit runs for the next month. Everything on display came from excavations within a 50-mile radius of Houston, evidence people here say of our heritage underground. Nancy Holland, 11 News. So Up next, what? Houston is an old town. It's, yeah, it is. <laughs> long, long time ago. Let's go over to Dan and talk to him about this soggy weather. Who am I supposed to answer to you? Yeah, uh, whatever. <laughs> Well, we had some good showers moving through the Houston, Texas area, but does it look like we'll be getting any more? I'm going to tell you about that next in the weather. And later, in his heyday, he was known as the Rambo of Moon Pie Eaters. Now he's just another guy who likes to stuff his face. We'll be right back. If you haven't tuned into Viewer's Choice lately... Boy, do I have a surprise for you. Three of this year's hottest movies, and they're all on Viewer's Choice on Warner Cable this October. Surprise! 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 Get Moonstruck with Cher and Nicolas Cage. Tune into Broadcast News with William Hurt and Holly Hunter. And wake up with Robin Williams in... Good morning, Vietnam! Order your favorites this October with Viewer's Choice on Warner Cable. Imagine this, you've been cast as a star in a primetime television program. Your name's in TV Guide, you work day and night with cast and crew to make that show a hit. You all believe it's going to be a blockbuster success. The new MASH, the new All in the Family. Your grandchildren will be watching the reruns, and then the show is canceled. Stars who cope with cancellation on the next Oprah Winfrey Show. Watch the Oprah Winfrey Show Monday at 4 on Channel 11. This week on Cisco and Ebert, James Kahn is a cop with a partner from another planet in Alien Nation. Uh, George, I, I think you're crushing his little chest bones. Stay out of this, Matthew. Right. And the public and private life of John Lennon in a new documentary called Imagine. I hope someday you join us. That's this week on Cisco and Ebert. See Cisco and Ebert and the movies tonight at 1045 on 11. 
Well, we're still getting some good range in southeast Texas. I'm hoping that your lawn tonight is getting some rain. Our 24-hour forecast, by tomorrow morning, maybe a slight chance of some showers, but most of that will be moving into the Gulf of Mexico tonight, about 58 degrees. Tomorrow noon, partly sunny skies, 70 degrees. Tomorrow afternoon, mostly sunny skies and temperature around 80. And tomorrow night, 72 degrees under fair skies. And tomorrow night, again, late tonight, getting kind of cool at 68 degrees. Well, last night, uh, this early this morning, rather, we were watching some showers around the Lufkin area. These have been staying around there this morning and they very quickly moved into Louisiana or dissipated. But between noon and one o'clock we saw a beginning line of thunder showers stretching from College Station and this line very slowly made its way into southeast Texas. That's what's making its way through the area right now and we're still seeing some showers stretching from El Campo back to the Houston Galveston area and some more heavier thunder showers just to the southeast of Lake Charles. Again these showers are pushing off toward the southeast about 15 miles per hour. Last night we were looking at the showers in the east port of Texas, but beginning tonight we can watch that line beginning to develop in southeast Texas. In fact, that line stretched from our neck of the woods all the way into west Texas, right around the Del Rio area. A better look at that line on our two-dimensional satellite. That line is being caused by a trough of low pressure, or you may want to think about it as a very weak cool front. Behind it, the air is slightly drier. The temperatures, yeah, are a little bit lower, and you can see there's a lot of humidity and temperatures coming in from Brownsville at 73 degrees. Hobby reporting 69 Galveston a bit warmer at 76. Intercontinental right now we have clouds and rain around 70 degrees. Humidity 79 percent. Dew point at 62. Northwest winds at 6. And the barometer on the rise now 30.09. High temperature today was a warm one 88. That is 4 degrees above normal. The morning low 62 and that was also above normal. Record high for today 93. Sit back in 1962. The record low 40 in 1976. And uh, since this evening we, we've had the rainfall about a uh, quarter of an inch here in Houston. Our weather watcher down at Clear Lake has reported about three quarters inches of rain. In fact, we've had some more re reports of more rain and less rain. So like I said, I hope your lawn had some rain for tonight. We'll be seeing that rain pushing into the Gulf of Mexico later tonight, moving into tomorrow, perhaps some lingering showers in South Texas for tomorrow. And we'll be watching a good push of very cold air toward the southeast. But right now, it's going to be moving more east and heading this way. Our forecast for Houston tonight, and we will continue with that slight chance of some showers as it continues to push toward the southeast, but we may see some uh, breaks tonight, and if that does happen, 58 degrees and a lingering chance of showers tomorrow, becoming mostly sunny skies in 80, and for the next several days, we will be seeing lots of sunshine, temperatures in the middle 50s during the night and 80s during the afternoon, and this is the best chance of rainfall we've had in perhaps a week or so, so let's hope people did get some good rain, because after this, it's going to be El Drio, as they say in Spain. And it was so considerate not to rain until after the darkness. We had something to do with that. Okay. I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> Thanks. Almost on the eve of a fire sale that would have split up the PTL organization among its creditors, a businessman has moved in and bought the whole thing. This after Jim and Tammy Baker failed in their last attempt last month to raise $172 million to regain their empire. Some thoughts tonight from Steve Smith. It turns out Jim and Tammy couldn't raise $172, let alone $172 million, even if they were to hawk or partly use cosmetics in his fancy glass shoe case. Well, the PTL sale is now a done deal anyway, but not to them. PTL, prosperity through larceny. This appalling example of down-home American religious TV merchandising run amok of honest piety perverted into feel-good greediness has been sold to a foreigner, a Canadian, a fellow named Stephen Mernick out of Toronto. He'll pay $115 million for PTL's TV studio, hotel, campground, shopping center, amusement park, and church, but the church is going to be rented back to the PTL. This fellow has his financial priorities straight on. The new PTL owner is said to want a maximum return on his investment. Now, that sounds suspiciously like the kind of purse-string Christianity Jim and Tammy were retailing, except we're not talking about huckstering in the name of Jesus here. Not hardly, not anymore. Stephen Mernick is Jewish, an Orthodox Jew. The new PTL boss, in fact, wouldn't even travel to North Carolina for the sale announcement because it was a Jewish holiday. So a Canadian conservative Jew takes control of the Christian material realm of a pseudo-religious American charlatan who made and spent millions wrapping himself in the banner of Jesus. What delicious irony. You know, it's too bad they're not adding any more stories to the Bible. This would be a fine parable about somebody who got exactly what was coming to him. Mm -hmm. 
Channel 11 listens. Send your replies to Steve Smith Commentaries. Post Office Box 11, Houston, 77001. your independent spirit at Lincoln Mercury's World of Women show, an unforgettable lifestyle event. Every subject from fashion to fitness, cosmetics to career counseling. Challenge your man to an exciting test of driving skills. Win one of many valuable prizes. Two tickets, $10. Get yours free with a no-hassle test drive. And enter the drawing for a free ticket to the Oprah Winfrey Forum. Drive Houston proud. See Jack Criswell, Leland, Summit, Southwest, and Charlie Thomas, Lincoln Mercury. What's so special about Wendy's new bacon Swiss burger? Bacon, special sauce, Swiss cheese, more bacon, and a toasted Kaiser bun. Wendy's is the only bacon Swiss burger with three strips of bacon. Come in now and grab one while they're hot. And for a limited time, buy a Wendy's bacon Swiss and get a small order of french fries for only 25 cents. Only at Wendy's. I don't have to be an expert on fishing gear. I just go to Academy and get the best equipment at the best prices. Garcia Ambassador Bay Casting Reels, $39.99. Academy, that's all you have to know. Well, the Oilers had the fight for their win today. They really did, Charles. The Oilers now stand 4-2 and two after victory over the Kansas City Chiefs. There weren't many offensive highlights, and head coach Jerry Glanville must now be hoping Warren Moon's fractured scapula heals sooner than expected. But while the offense was sputtering today, the defense was excelling as the Oilers edged the Chiefs. Mark Watts has the wrap-up. It started out looking like a long day for the Oilers. After their first drive stall, Tony Zendejas came in and did something he's done very well this year, miss. He was wide right on two attempts for the day. Injury then struck another Houston quarterback. Cody Carlson throws incomplete here, but in the process slams his hand on somebody's helmet. He left the game with a dislocated and fractured right thumb. I just uh, went over the sidelines, they pulled it out and uh, kind of swore up and I couldn't really grip the ball very well after that. Enter Brent Peace, who's completed three of five passes this season. One of them had been completed to the opposition. Peace's first pass of this game was also intercepted, one of three that landed in the hands of the opposition. He completed four passes to Oilers. The Chiefs could only muster two field goals, however, and they led at the half 6 nothing. I give myself a C at the best, if not a little worse, maybe a D. I, uh, I throw the ball very sharp. Penalty flags, tough defense, and more peace frustration filled the second half of football. On one third quarter drive, the second year QB exhausted all three timeouts. Finally, after driving the offense to the Chiefs four, he got the call and on a bootleg scored the game's lone touchdown. Tony Zendejas did not miss the extra point. Houston's defense shut down KC from here on. The D chalked up five sacks and two interceptions. We just did not want to lose this game. I mean, we're playing in our home stadium. We, we needed to be four and two at this point. We couldn't, couldn't afford to be uh, three and three. Mike Rogier helped run down the clock in the final quarter. He finished with 141 yards rushing. 21 yellow flags littered the field before it ended. The refs called 12 of those penalties on Houston. The bottom line is we're four and two. It was ugly, but uh, we've had all those thrilling defeats you need anyway. So it was an ugly win, but uh, bottom line is we're four and two and thrilled to death. They'll try to make it five and two next Sunday in Pittsburgh. From the Astrodome, Mark Watts, 11 Sports. And Oilers quarterback Cody Carlson was not the only NFL signal caller injured today. There were eight quarterbacks on the injured list before today. And now look at the list of the injured quarterbacks from this Sunday's action. Again, Cody suffered a fractured right thumb. Cleveland lost its third quarterback of the season as Mike Pagel went down with a separated shoulder. 
Chris Chandler of Indianapolis went down today with a sternum injury. Chuck Long of Detroit went out with a sprained knee. And then in the same game, Chicago quarterback Jim McMahon out with a concussion. So quarterbacks continue to be the marked men of the NFL. Now checking action from the glamour game of the AFC today. Cincinnati hosting the Jets. Boomer Siasen threw for three touchdowns. Here he goes to Eddie Brown in the end zone. 12-9 to nine Bengals at that time in the second. Then as Siasen goes long to Tim McGee. And Cincinnati goes on to win this one, 36-19. to 19. The Cowboys were roughed up by the Redskins today. Here young Mark Rippon hits Kelvin Bryant for the score. Bryant holds on despite the great hit. Then later Rippon takes it in himself. The Redskins go on top here 28 to 10. The final Redskins 35. Dallas 17. To the NFL scoreboard you can see that Chicago was a winner over Detroit. Indianapolis lost by one at Buffalo. The Rams rolled over Atlanta. Green Bay won its first game of the season as the pack throttled New England. Seattle whipped the Browns in Cleveland. Tampa Bay lost by one at Minnesota. Phoenix beat Pittsburgh. Denver topped San Francisco in OT. Miami whipped the Raiders and New Orleans topped San Diego. The National League Championship Series resumed tonight in New York. and The Dodgers were without their ace reliever Jay Howell because he's been suspended for the next three days. That suspension stems from yesterday's incident when Howell was ejected from the game for having pine tar on his glove. He says he's planning on appealing that suspension. And tonight in Game 4 of that series, the Dodgers and Mets are all tied up in the ninth. Mike Sosha has just tied the game in the top of the ninth with a two-run homer. Again, the Mets led that series two games to one coming into tonight's ball game. And while the Mets and Dodgers continue their National League pennant duel. The Oakland A's ended their American League series with Boston today with the Bash Brothers leading the way. Yes, the fans in Oakland looking for a clean sweep today, and they got it. Bash brother number one, Jose Canseco, got the A's on the board in the first with his third homer of the game, an opposite field shot to make it one nothing Oakland. It was 2-1 to one A's in the eighth when Bash brother number two, Mark McGuire, knocked in his fellow brother, Canseco, single up the middle. That made it 3-1. to one. The A's go on to win it 4-1. to one. Reliever Dennis Eckersley named the series MVP after saving all four games. The A's are headed to the World Series. Well, now the free agent forward Otis Thorpe has come and gone from our city. The question is, when will that deal with the Rockets be done, and will it ever be done? The fact that Thorpe was in town yesterday taking a physical tells you that something is going on, but no one is saying just exactly what that something is. Again, the name is being mentioned in the possible trade with Sacramento for Thorpe and a high draft pick or rocket forwards Rodney McCray and Jim Peterson. And of course, the Rockets also still haven't signed top pick Derek Chivas, but that deal also is expected to be closed very soon. So this could be a very busy week for general manager Ray Patterson. Tonight out at Hobby Airport, a hero's welcome for those two young men, Carl Lewis and Joe Deloach, Carl won two golds at Seoul. Joe won one, and Joe is showing his off tonight at the airport. What are you doing? Yeah, what are you doing? You hang it up in your house? You put it in yeah, I'm going to give it to my mother, and they'll cherish it. I'll cherish it, too, but I'll give it to them to remember, and I'll be looking on, uh, hoping to compete in Barcelona in 1990, 19-what? 92? Yeah. Joe, by the way, wasn't uh, answering the questions of whether he would forego his collegiate eligibility tonight. There will be a news conference tomorrow, but he's expected to announce that he will give up the collegiate career at U of H and uh, pursue his Olympic ambitions. You can see happy homecoming there for Carl Lewis and Joe Deloach. They said the main thing is it's great to be back in Houston. Okay, thanks a lot. Thanks, All right, let's check the news calendar for a look towards the week ahead. Monday is Columbus Day. It is a federal holiday, so banks will be closed and no mail will be delivered. The holiday will not be observed by HISD, so Houston schools will be open. On Tuesday, the 41st Annual Symposium on Fundamental Cancer Research begins at MD Anderson Hospital. Top cancer researchers from across the country will be meeting in Houston throughout the week. On Wednesday, the first of two weeks of activities set aside to celebrate Buffalo Bio begin. Buffalo Bio Days will be celebrating Houston's waterfront heritage and the progress being made on the renewal of the waterway. On Thursday, a legislative hearing discussing the Texas Natural Death Act will be held in Houston. The hearing will discuss the difficult problems faced by irreversibly ill and severely incapacitated patients in nursing homes, hospitals, and hospices. And Friday, the sixth annual conference for black farmers opens in Dallas. The conference, sponsored by the Texas Department of Agriculture, is designed to improve the future of farming in Texas. And finally tonight, we go to Oneota, Alabama for a tale of epic proportions, a mix of the agony of gluttony and the thrill of the feast. 
Rodney Frazier rode into town today as the undefeated moon pie eating champion. <laughs> I'll probably eat 18 this time, he boasted, and adversaries shrank in his confident tuxedo clad shadow. But it was not to be. Though the competition began, he started out strong. This gets uglier, folks. Fans <laughs> cheered wildly as his well-conditioned cheeks inflated with pie after pie. But after eating a mere 11, the champion faltered and stopped. But his competitors continued to stuff down an unprecedented 15 marshmallow-filled cookies. As for Frazier, he says he'll be back next year to regain his throne, and maybe the moon pie gods will look on him again with favor. <laughs> I used to eat moon pies. Not quite like that, though. That's nice to hear, Charles. <laughs> Just a little insight there. We're going to end this on a fairy tale tonight. <laughs> That's our news. We thank you very much for joining us. We'll see you again next week. Good night. You're invited to the hottest all-star party in town. Picture yourself with your favorite stars on TV's Funniest Game. Now, you see, we're going to try. Oh, my goodness, we're enthusiastic today. Here's your chance to play along with some of the fastest draws in the West. It's quick draw fun that's always right on the mark. Come out, come out, wherever you are. You know how silly you look with a mustache? Catch all the fun on win, lose, or draw. Weekdays at 3 on 11. Never before in the history of television have so few asked so much of so many. Who is Winston Churchill? Sorry, that's wrong. What is Jeopardy? You're right. That's when everybody speaks Jeopardies. Jeopardies. The ability to communicate in the form of a question. You can learn to speak Jeopardies at home. Let's start now. It's the time and channel you can watch Jeopardy. What is weekdays at 3.30 on 11? Providing legal aid in Houston for 40 years.